I'll tell you what my life was like without faith. I wished I could have died. Faith is one of those words like religion that people tend to associate with their grandmothers. Today we often use words like spirituality or energy instead. But there is a growing number of people finding a certain richness, a history of suffering and joy that still resonates when we hear the word faith. If faith is more than like this magical, mystical thing that we cannot see. Faith has become that calm peace that I live every day of my life. Faith is a commitment to the eternal. Faith is actually how I function in life. There's an element of trust in faith. Uh, I think faith is organic to life. Faith to me is putting my trust and belief in something that is outside of myself. It gives my life meaning. It gives me vision for the future and it gives me a lot of hope. It's a choice to believe as opposed to a skepticism or cynicism. Faith is love and um, so it's necessary to me. We were created to believe in something outside of ourselves. Whatever your definition of faith, there's no question that faith matters to the people who have experienced it. One of those who has not only experienced faith but studied it is Wade Clark Roof. After writing eight books on religious trends in the United States, he's considered a leading expert. He had this to say about faith. Faith is important because it provides an anchor for one's life. Faith says, in effect, when all else fails, this you can believe in. Faith matters because I know enough about life to, to know that just what I have inside myself and to offer is not going to cut it. The popular idea of faith is that it's a, a leap into darkness, that it is a jump from objective reality to some subjective myth or unseen thing. But I think that uh, faith is actually a leap into the light. Faith is important, but if I weren't raised with it, how do I go about getting it? Edie Hughes didn't discover faith until she was an adult. My journey to faith has been an extremely long journey. It's been the majority of my life. I grew up thinking I had to do things to have faith. I had to be the good person. I had to do all the right things. I had to work. It's only been the last few years that I finally understood that there's nothing, absolutely nothing I can do to have faith except to give my life to God. Once I did that and understood it, my faith has grown by leaps and bounds. At one time I thought maybe I am an atheist, maybe I don't believe in God. But uh, that didn't last long because I found that there were too many unanswered questions and I have more questions in my mind trying not to believe in God than I did when I put my belief in God. And so it was easier uh, to believe than not to believe. And I just didn't have enough faith not to believe. Faith can be a powerful thing, but for some, living with faith may seem harder than living without it. Is faith, no matter how nice an idea, simply naive? Science and our ability to reason are the tools that teach us the truth about the world. Or do they? There was hope at one time that science and rationalism would answer life's most important questions. And they were able to answer a lot of important questions, like the what questions, uh, what are things made of, or the how questions, how did things come to be here? but they've been unable to answer the why questions. Why do I exist? Why does anything exist? And, and the only hope of any kind of meaningful answer then is rooted in faith. I have to believe. I think it's built into the human situation 
that we want to believe in a power higher than ourselves. If there's nothing beyond the here and now and the things that I can see, um, that, uh, that looks incredibly empty to me. Faith embraces the total truth beyond our immediate reality, beyond the seen, beyond what you can feel and sense. I want to use reason as a tool, but there are times wherein the human mind is simply not capable of the, the tasks. For instance, the mystery of God, and there, there will be a failure of, of reason to comprehend. And in those times, I have to suspend rational judgment and allow faith its freedom and its creativity to embrace a God I cannot fully comprehend. The only thing I can say to people is surrender. You have to come to the point where you're willing to give up. All of it. Without faith, I think I would shrivel and die. Um, I would become something less than human. Uh, I, would, uh, I would stop living. I might exist, but I would stop living. Wings on a bird point to the reality of air. Sunflowers facing the sun point to the reality of light. Built into the human heart is a longing everyday life doesn't satisfy. That longing points to the reality of a God to have faith in. When we come back, we'll talk to Houston Smith, probably the most eloquent and respected world authority on why faith matters today. Are you looking for a way to change your life? The answer may be as easy as watching TV. Introducing Hello Channel, an exciting new channel that's designed to teach you to speak English. New opportunities will be available to you when you learn the language of the internet, commerce, travel, and diplomacy. No need to pay for your expensive schools or tutors. You can learn English by watching Hello Channel. Invest in yourself. For a brighter future, say hello. Houston Smith is the author of the best-selling book, The World's Religions, a standard textbook in universities across the land. And in fact, Dr. Smith, I should have brought my copy from college <laughs> and had you autograph the book. There isn't hardly an American student that has not been acquainted with that best-selling book. But you have been active in writing. I hold here in my hands his latest book, Why Religion Matters, The Fate of the Human Spirit in an Age of Disbelief. PBS, a few years ago, you did a five-part series with Bill Moyers, right. 11 honorary doctoral degrees. We are delighted to have you here at The Evidence. It's a great pleasure welcome, to be welcome. here. Now, I suppose your fascination with world religion had something to do with the fact that you were born in China? Well, it did actually, but more directly, it had to do with my parents, but they would not have been uh, parents of uh, sterling and powerful faith uh, had they not had that faith to propel them to go to China and spread that faith to others. So you, you, you were first, obviously, very significantly affected by your own parents' faith. Absolutely. Um, I have been a teacher all my life, and I find many of my students uh, that uh, their religious institution, church or synagogue, rubbed them the wrong way. Mm. Uh, and they picked up a lot of negativity. But mine was totally different. Uh, when I asked them, well, what do you have against religion? They say, first, it's dogmatic. All right. We've got the truth and everybody else is going to hell in a wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. And second, it's moralistic. Don't do this, that, and the other thing. That's not what came through uh, 
to me from Christianity through my parents. It was rather we're in good hands and in gratitude for that fact. It will be well if we bear one another's burden. Yep. And with all my gallivanting through these other mm -hmm. religions, I've never come upon a formula that, that has stayed in place as well as that has. Let me ask you, speaking of these world religions and a formula, is there one definition of faith that fits all religions? Well, uh, I would say yes. It's like a theme with variations. Uh, but the theme that runs through faith, wherever it is used, is trust. Okay. And if you ask what it means to be a man or woman of faith, the basic answer is uh, that trust is built in mm -hmm. to your makeup. What's the difference between faith and religion? Uh, religion is organized faith. I would say there is no religion that is not based on faith and a specific faith because then we get into the variations. Uh, the common theme that runs through is trust. But trust in what? How do you articulate that? Uh, that differs from within the various religions. Have we outgrown this organized faith, as you described it a moment ago, as you described religion. Have we outgrown it? I do not think so. Uh, human beings are homo, that's the Latin for human being, right. religiosus. We are the religious animal. Yeah. The religious yeah. organism. The Why religious are animal. we religious organism? Mm. We were made by the divine, and as such, we carry the image of the divine within the product, within ourselves. I see. And when in Genesis it says that God breathed upon the creature that he'd made, breathe the spirit, that spirit is the spirit of God. And that is the fundamental, most fundamental element in our nature, deeper than sexuality, uh, deeper than is, jealousy. Mm -hmm. and the, is, is that uh, the common uh, ingredient to all religion? Well, we have variations. Uh, always uh, in the study of comparative religion, all the important points come out as, I've already said, theme and variation. Mm -hmm. So yes, that is the common theme. You've spent your life studying world religion. Yes. You've spent your life examining faith or trust as you I've just defined I've been very it. fortunate. What difference has religion made in your life? Well, we all understand each ourselves imperfectly. So I won't say that I'm a, a clear <laughs> image to myself, but as I understand it, it's made all the difference. It's uh, the difference between living in a palace and living in a hovel or maybe living in a prison. And how can a difference that great not impact a life very importantly. So I feel like it's the most important element in shaping me. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Houston Smith, and we're going to be joined by a very dear friend of his, Dr. Obadiah Harris, a philosopher. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Learning a new language can be difficult and discouraging, but it doesn't have to be. Hello, I'm Karen, introducing Hello Channel, the revolutionary new channel 
designed especially to teach English. If you can speak English, the future is open for you, since speaking English means greater opportunity and higher paying jobs. By watching Hello Channel, you are immersed in this valuable language. You'll hear the words being spoken, You'll see the speakers' mouths when they say the words. You'll read what's being spoken in large, clear subtitles. And you'll speak out loud, practicing what you have just learned. There is no better or faster way to learn a language than total immersion. Hello Channel does exactly that. There's programming on every level so you can watch the shows that are just perfect for you. Whether you've spoken a little English, a great deal of English, or none at all, the Hello Channel has something for everyone. Join us for a convenient, affordable, and fun way to shape your future. There's so much in store for you if you'll just say hello. We're talking with Houston Smith, author of Why Religion Matters and noted teacher on the subject of religion. Now we're joined by his good friend, Dr. Obadiah Harris. Welcome, Dr. Harris. You are president of the Philosophical Research Society, Los Angeles. That's right. Gentlemen, with you sitting right there together, let's plunge into this business of religion and science. Two competing worldviews, are they? Would you say competing worldviews? I would. In what ways? Well, I would say that up until the rise of modern science, why they fit together like hand and glove. That science dealt with the what we could pick up with uh, the empirical evidence of what we can pick up with our senses. Uh, this world, you might say, and religion dealt with what is greater than this world. But now they have fallen into uh, positions of antagonism, and the reason is that science's successes in the material world have been so mind-boggling that we have slipped into the mistake of thinking that because it has done such miracles with the material world, it is the omnicompetent uh, window uh, to truth and can tell us the truth about the whole world. Which, which that means is it, not so. Which means we we're, we're, we're have the tendency to conclude that science, with all its achievements, really answers the ultimate questions and we don't need anything beyond science. That's the assumption. Answers them or else they are unanswerable. In other words, whatever answers can be forthcoming come from science. Now that is dead wrong. Now Obadiah, dead wrong, Houston says, and you were very quick to state absolutely incompatible. Yes, and I, I think that they are incompatible so long as science insists on being the sole proprietor of knowing what is reality. You see, that, that is the word reality that, that, that separates us. Okay. As if that which is imminent is real, that which is transcendent is unreal. If a scientist will take a little bit of humility and simply admit that there are some things they don't know about, that may be real, then you have compatibility. Well, you're, you're not suggesting an intellectual uh, arrogance, are you? Yeah, I think I am. I think there is an intellectual arrogance and a dogmatism that is attached to, to science today uh, because uh, they do not want to consider that, that reality can have any other definition than the physical properties that we understand as reality. Uh, I'm curious, Houston, World religions. Is this unique to, to Western thought that science and religion are kept apart? Uh, Eastern thought, would it bring science and religion together, or is science even a, a worldview to be contended with outside of the West? Well, uh, this is a conflict only in the Western world. I see. And the rest of the world, uh, insofar it is be, as it is taking on Western modes of thought. 
but uh, the rest of the world hasn't been shaped as much as we have by modern science and the controlled experiment. So it's not nearly the conflict there. How, how would you make the case, Obadiah, then, to a scientist mm -hmm. uh, with an appeal to trust? Uh, Houston a moment ago defined uh, faith ultimately as trust. Uh, how would you make the case for a scientist to trust? I would say that every scientist has ultimate trust. Uh, they wouldn't even get into an experiment if they didn't trust. So trust. Trust is, what? Well, trust the laws of the universe. Okay. So in that in that in that way, we do have something deeply in common, mm -hmm. in a trust in the reliability of the laws of the universe. Every experiment they make is uh, has its foundation in that trust. Then, what step would a scientist need to take to move from trusting the laws of the universe to trusting uh, a personal being? Well, I think that's a big leap for most scientists. Who, too big? Uh, too big for mo the scientists that I have known. Mm -hmm. There's a metaphor I like. It's as though uh, we human beings were in a gigantic balloon and we have flashlights and those are metaphors for the scientific method. And we can shine our flashlights on anything inside the balloon, but there's no way we can get our flashlights outside the balloon to determine where the balloon is in space. So you're suggesting science operates inside the balloon, religion is what reaches outside that balloon. Very well put. Right. And if only we would recognize what that metaphor says, we would be past this whole uh, agonizing uh, antagonism and become partners, each recognizing that there's something that the other can do that it itself cannot do. Obadiah Harris, Houston Smith, what a delight to have you Thank on you. the evidence. A Thank great you. pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. You. This is a subject that I'm sure you would enjoy digging deeper into. We have a website, it's just one word, theevidence.org, O-R-G. Click onto that website, The Issue of Faith and Religion. It's one of, the, one of the pivotal issues in life today. Check it out. We're gonna be right back after a moment with some concluding thoughts. This is Hello Channel. Come learn English as you watch TV. It will change your life. Sometimes faith can seem like a distant memory. Sometimes God can seem like someone we just can't imagine anymore. And yet people continue to rediscover Him. In fact, they encounter God with all the wonder of a wide-eyed child. According to the individuals who've talked about their experiences in this program, it's possible to remember again, to make faith work in our world today. You know, I think we sometimes subconsciously resist faith resist trust. We won't quite allow ourselves to give in to a friendly universe. Maybe we've been disappointed. Something bad happened that we don't understand. Maybe we think we have good reasons for our misgivings. But have you ever asked yourself if chronic doubt isn't sometimes a form of sulking? We're like the child who refuses to come to the dinner table because we didn't get our way. We feel that God has let us down and we're not going to give him the satisfaction of showing up when he calls. But the people of faith we've heard from tell us, maybe it's better to come to the table, to stop standing in the corner. Maybe we've simply misunderstood our Father. And maybe with a new understanding, we'll realize that God can be trusted, that He is worthy of our faith. That's what I think. I'm Dwight Nelson. Join us next time for more of The Evidence.